the role that has by far changed the least amount through the entire span of history of League of Legends is obviously the ADC role. When we're talking about just even the position itself and where they're placed on the map, what they do on the map, how they do their damage, the agency that they have, the objective control that they're supposed to do, all of these factors really largely hasn't changed for the role itself. And so when you consider that, you can see as to why maybe these players are the way that they are, uh, just psychologically. So, you know, first, initially, the biggest move, and I think probably the only big move that happened with ADC was that they moved from mid lane to bot lane. Yeah, back in the day, uh, early season one, in fact, they used to be in the mid lane. Like uh, Ash was very popular in the mid lane, same with Ezreal. And then people started to realize, it's like, wait, they don't have that great of mobility and they scale way better than any other role. So let's pair them over with a support. And, you know, let's let's have that. used to be uh, mages were you know, at, at the bot lane itself. So that was like the biggest change. And then, you know, yeah, sure. There was the odd blip of having mages bot, right. But it immediately switched back to traditional ADCs. And this was in part too, because Riot also allowed for magic damage to scale against uh, attacking turrets. So now AP is factored into uh, how much damage you can deal to turrets. Uh, but back in the day, that, that wasn't the case, in fact. So that's why you actually needed an ADC, in fact. And so we never would have gotten the Mage's bot lane if not for that change specifically. But people started to realize way later after that change, actually, that that was even a possibility. So I joke about <laughs> from the title, and maybe the, only the older crowd is going to get it, but <laughs> I joke about ADC mains being Republicans, but... You can at least tell, you know, from from the very least that the player mindset in itself is just kind of they're set in their ways in terms of they're trying to perfect something and trying to like, you know, figure out a way to perfect the tradition of what an ADC actually is. And, you know, just realistically, when you look at the role itself, it's like you can't fuck up, you misposition, you die you fail to kite, you die. You fail to dish out damage while kiting, your entire team dies. You fail to track CC, you die. You look at the enemy mid laner wrong, you die. So <laughs> there's a lot of ways to die as an ADC. And I think that's what they're constantly thinking about the entire time as they play that role is, well, what can fuck me over, you know, at this particular time? And they have to keep track of all those different things at once. So you can see as to how maybe they get into this perfection type of mindset because, you know, literally anything can basically kill them and they have no playmaking potential or escape or utility and whatnot most often. And there's a reason why you see players like, you know, famously forgiven uh, complaining about his teammates and if they don't play perfectly then you know they're just shit teammates and they should know how to play perfectly and uh, this is the type of mindset that you get you know when you get to the higher echelons of you know say pro play for instance is that they've perfected the role of ADC so much to where they get kind of caught within their own head of thinking that, well, this is how everyone should think. Everyone should have to play perfectly and whatnot, which, as we all know, the margin for error is a little bit higher for other roles, right? Especially for a tank, you can end up mispositioning a little bit, and it's not a big deal because you have such uh, high resistances or a lot of uh, HP, right? And I think there's also a reason why you always hear, you know, the, the famous thing of ADCs complaining in solo queue about their support. It's because they notice all these little things of maybe the support is trying to push the wave when you really don't want to push the wave or maybe the support is actually missing all their skill shots or maybe their support doesn't know how to zone and take control of the lane because you know in fact supports have way more control in the lane than adcs do although that's often misunderstood uh but 
it's it's all these things that the ADC is looking at and criticizing constantly because they're trying to fight for every single CS and they notice all these micro uh, transactions that happen throughout you know the entire game itself and even just. When you think about the role itself, just in the broader psychological sense, it's that it's this mentality of help me accomplish my goals and we all win, right? Because I deal the most damage often, right? Unless, you know, there's like a Azir or a Victor or something. But oftentimes it's that the ADC, ADC deals the most damage, you know, especially as the game progresses. So all the attention should be on me, right? And... I can kind of understand that mentality uh, to a sense, right? Uh, especially as a game gets later and later, then yeah, you teammates should try and attune themselves to be able to protect their ADC or, you know, go to the wants and needs of the ADC itself. Uh, but you can see how someone could get stuck in like this cyclical pattern of thought. Now, another player that I think is probably his biggest weakness of this is Reckless. I think his biggest weakness is certainly not being able to play to the boundaries of the role itself. But I mean, how can you really blame the dude? You know, when you just, just think about his mindset, how, you know, he has been brought up through solo queue and, and had to play perfectly in order to not get fucked because he can't, he can't even rely on his own teammates, right? He can't rely on his own support. So he's going to play passively no matter what, just because that role relies so much on other people. Right, so you end up developing these habits uh, as you progress, and then of course get to pro status, and now that kind of sticks with you as like a nature of habit. So when you see a player like Reckless, maybe not go for an aggressive trade in lane, or maybe not go for the aggressive positioning in a team fight, then you can kind of realize where this entire mentality comes from, and I just think it's inherently. Uh, built into the role itself as well. Now, you think in contrast, someone like Doublelift looks like a fucking idiot sometimes <laughs> because he's the opposite, right? He plays very aggressive. He plays, you know, he he like toes the line, so to speak, you know, or even goes over the line, I guess you could say. And so he then ends up looking stupid whenever he does because traditionally ADCs aren't meant to do that. Uh, but to be a great ADC, in fact, I think, is that you do have to do that sometimes uh, because a predictable play style is a stale play style, and eventually you're just going to get defeated by doing that anyways. So I think a brash ADC is like it's it's inimical to the overall play style of League of Legends itself, right? It's It's something that you shouldn't do because oftentimes you're the one that needs to be relied upon later on as the game progresses, right? You're like the late game insurance, you know, that everyone likes to say. So <clears throat> there's, I think, a reason why ADCs get pissed off if you don't play perfectly because that minimizes the chances that they even get to play the fucking game to begin with, right? Because they haven't had their power spike in the very early beginnings of the game. So, you know, how pissed would you be as you know, a top laner going 0 and 3, and then suddenly you don't get to play the game because this Fiora is just going to stomp the shit out of your entire team. It's like, cool. Like, you don't get to play League of Legends. And you think about it just even in the terms of uh, the, the pro aspect. So famously, pros complain that there is no sandbox mode to where you can 5v5 practice against an entire team and repeat drills over and over in team fights because you have to get up to the team fight, right? So even just just plainly, it's very difficult, I think, to develop the primary team fight carry role of what an ADC is supposed to do because you don't get much practice in it anyways because, you know, games obviously don't go on very long more than they are short, right? Because you have to go through the beginning to get to the end, but, you know, necessarily you won't reach the end game point. So... I think ADC players are just like the same players that, you know, in StarCraft, they, they say, hey, yo, like no rush, 20 minutes, you know, <laughs> like they're, they're those same exact players, but now they're just younger, right? So <laughs> at the end of the day, so while your ADC might technically be on blue side, I think he's always on red side. 